Hi, good morning. It's uh, it's the first Sunday of October. Happy first Sunday, and uh, happy uh, what? Happy fourth quarter of 2020. <laughs> Parang uh, ang bilis ah. Magpapas ko na. Anyway, magka Thanksgiving pala muna and then Pasko. Maraming maraming pas- salamat po at uh, pinaulakan niyo po kami ulit na makasama. This is your LA First Church of the Nazarene. Uh, LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. And uh, we're so happy na makasama kayo sa sa umaga na to, sa araw ng pagsamba para sa ating Panginoon. Let's open your Bibles, no? Uh, and turn it to Psalm 115, verse 3. But our God is in the heavens. He does whatever He pleases. Amen. Because He's sovereign, right? He's the best there is. Kumbaga, He's the Alpha and Omega. Wala nang tatalo. Di ba? Sabi, wala na daw tatalo sa Alaska. Pero hindi, talo ni Lord yung Alaska. <laughs> Alam mo, ang magandang tanong siguro sa umaga na ito ay, How big is your God? How big is your problem? Meron akong nabasa na kasabihan na sa kung saan uh, kinapupulutan ng, uh, ng wisdom at katotohanan uh, ang Facebook. <laughs> May nakita ako sa Facebook. Alam niyo sa Facebook, madami na magandang mababasa at makikita eh, pero madami rin magand- hindi maganda at uh, walang katorya-torya. Pero ito, ito, isa to sa pinaka ma- maayos na nabasa ko. Sabi dito, don't tell God you have a big problem. Tell your problem you have a big God. Oh, para narinig ko na rin ito kay ano, Manny Pacquiao nung kinalaban niya si, uh, si Torman. No? Anyway, we will talk about for this morning, your big God can handle it. Whatever it is, your big God can handle it. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you have a big God. Yes. Our learnings for this morning, number one, we will uh, we'll talk about that He is sovereign. Yes, He is sovereign. He is above all. Number two, uh, uh, isa sa mga learnings natin, eh, we'll, uh, baga, we'll put emphasis na ang ating Panginoon ay always in charge. Number three, God is seldom early but never late. And number four, your God is holy, therefore I encourage you, be holy. Amen. Let's start. Now look at the person next to you. No? We have a very, very big God. Sabihin mo sa kanya. At alam mo, uh, sabihin mo nga sa kanya na sabi nga ni Senator Manny Pacquiao, God is bigger than your problem. Right? Ang diba? dami niya ng tinalong malalaki. Di ba? Pero sabi niya nga, God is bigger than your problem. Anyway, tell me, our faith will be tested every day. And your response will depend on how well you know who God is, right? Let's open our Bible a little and turn it to Isaiah chapter 45, verses 6 to 7. In verse 6, it says that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, and there is none besides, besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Verse 7, I form light and create darkness. Uh, I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Our God is sovereign. Grabe. Right? Our God is sovereign. So, first learning natin, uh, first takeaway natin for this morning, Our God is sovereign. Uh, he is sovereign, right? He is Lord of the universe in charge of all things. Amen? So, we can trust Him, right? If you don't know your God, how can you trust Him? Diba? Sa isang simbahan, naalala ko yung joke, sabi ni Pedro, Pastor, di ko po mapigilan na pumatay ng mga tao. Sabi ng pastor, o oh, bakit, bakit ka naman pumapatay ng tao? Sabi ni Pedro, kasi po, pinapatay ko ang mga taong naniniwala sa Diyos. Ikaw po, pastor, naniniwala po ba kayo sa Diyos? Sabi ni pastor, sino yun? <laughs> Dininay, eh, no? What is sovereignty? Okay, sovereignty means that all things are under God's rule and control 
Okay? And nothing happens without His directions or permissions. Okay? God works not just some things, but all things according to the counsel of His own will. Alam mo yung sabi nga sa Hebrews 10.23, He who promised is faithful. Yeah. Hindi lang sa sovereign, faithful pa ang Panginoon. Tanong nga ay, who offers is your life? You or God? Who do you trust? You or God? Now, wag natin gayaan yung pastor kanina na, 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 na nanganib lang yung buhay niya. Eh. Dininay niya na kagad si Lord, di ba? He knows the beginning and the end. He's the Lion of Judah. He's worth trusting. He's the Alpha and Omega. Simula noon hanggang ngayon at bukas hanggang sa dulo ng magpakailanman. Ang Diyos ay hindi nagbabago. He is in complete control so we can trust Him. Right? Remember when, how David trust the Lord now when he slaughtered Goliath. Imagine mo. Ano, nine cubits pa si Goliath. Oh, grabe. <laughs> almost, baka almost 15 to 20 feet ata yung height ni Goliath. And Si David sabi mo ng six-footer lang, pero basketball na lang sila. Hindi siya, hindi siya mananalo kay Goliath. Eh. Patayan pa kaya. Pero his God is in complete control. So he trusted the Lord. That's why we need to trust God in our lives because he's in perfect control of our life. All right? In Ephesians 1-11, binagit natin kanina, in him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who walks all things according to the counsel of His will. Number two, God is in charge. Okay, we learned that He is sovereign. Number two, God is in charge. Sabi nga eh, pa-move on, move on din, pa-minsan-minsan. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, let go and let God. Yeah, He is in charge. Your God is in charge. He's in charge of your life. He's in charge of providing for you. He's, 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 in, he's in charge of protecting you. He's in charge of uh, everything. Everything that you need. Everything that you uh, you hope for in life. He's in charge. No? Because God is God. Allow God to be God. Wag natin pakialaman yung, yung role niya kasi. Di ba? Allow Him to be God in our lives. There is no one above Him. Kasi nga, He's sovereign. He is in charge. He can do whatever He wants and He is not accountable to us. Right? He does not need to answer to us. No? Kasi Siya yung creator natin. In Daniel 4.35, it says, All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. And He does according to His will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay His hand or say to Him, What? Have you done? Although he's not account- accountable, no? Kumbaga, he's our creator, pero he loves us so much. He cares for us so much. Ang sabi, naka-engrave pa nga yung pangalan natin na sa ating, sa palm of our hands. No, ganun niya tayo kamahal. All of us go through suffering, given yan. Right? Maging kristyano ka man, hindi ka kristyano, kaka-born again mo lang, o wala, hindi mo kilala ang Diyos. All of us go go through suffering. Although we do not understand why, we must trust God because He is in perfect control. Hindi ko maintindihan ba't may pandemic? Hindi ko maintindihan ba't parang tumigil ang mundo? Hindi ko maintindihan parang ang problema hindi natatapos. Pero we must trust God. No? If you trust the Lord, He'll show you He's in perfect control. And you, He will bless your heart. And talaga mapapapraise the Lord ka. I thank you, Lord, that I put my trust in you. Right? He uses these problems, no? Kung ano mo yung dinadaanan natin ngayon to teach us good and to accomplish His purpose. No? Kung baga sa isang atleta, kailangan dumaan ng suffering, kailangan dumaan ng pagsasanay para magamit niya sa panahon o sa araw ng pakikipaglaban niya or pakikipagtunggali. Sometimes some of our trials are due to our bad decisions. Huwag din naman natin isisilahan sa Diyos o sa mga tao sa paligid natin o sa mga pangyayari. Most of the times, kagagawan natin. Right? Although we have free will, we are accountable for our choices. Okay? Hindi porki binigyan tayo ng free will ng Panginoon, eh, eh gagamitin na natin sa mali. Sabi nga, everything is uh, permissible, but 
not every not not every, not everything is beneficial hindi lahat pwedeng mapakinabangan o makabuti sa atin alam niyo ulitin ko lang God is sovereign lalong lalo na in the exercise of his mercy no imagine how forgiving our lord is imagine kahit ilang beses ay nagkakamali he's always there like the loving father na naghintay do sa 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 prodigal son no na talaga namang hinihintay tayo bumalik sa piling niya We learn about his sovereign. We learn that he is in charge. Let's talk about number three. God is seldom early, but never late. Wow, maganda tong pag-usapan. Ano ba nangyari dito? Tingnan natin. God is seldom early, but never late. In the story of Lazarus in John 11, when Jesus found out his friend was sick and he stayed longer where he was, No, nalaman niya na, na may sakit si Lazarus pero hindi kaagad siya pupunta. Mary and Martha, kapatid ni Lazarus, were very disappointed because by the time Jesus got there, Lazarus had been dead and buried for four days. Well, alam naman natin, kapag napatay, eh, <laughs> binuburol na or uh, nilibing na sa, sa apat na araw, eh, mga ngamoy na yun. Ma- majoho na, di ba? Kung baga, eh, talagang masakit sa ilong yun. No? Alam mo, here's the thing. We need to understand, no? Na Jesus had a bigger plan. Na medyo may, mahirap intindihan sa part ni Martha at saka ni Mary na lalo na, consider nila si Jesus na kaibigan eh. No? Yeah, Jesus had a bigger plan when he brought Lazarus back to life. Kasi nga, he is in perfect control. Kasi nga, no, kumbaga, akala natin late, pero hindi talaga ang Panginoon. Kumbaga, laging eksakto yung datingan niya. No? People witnessed no, the power of Jesus and they became believers and God was glorified. He made use of that situation. No, kay Lazarus, to make sure that pakita yung kanyang power, pakita kung gaano siya kalaki bilang Diyos. Ipakita na He is worth trusting. Ipakita na He is in perfect control. Ipakita na He is in charge na even life and death He has a say. No, meron siyang, meron siyang, ano, meron siyang, meron siyang say. Meron siyang, kumbaga, uh, kung walang approval niya, hindi mangyayari. Right? What stone Do you need to remove from your life so that God's work may be accomplished? Napagandang tanong yun kasi sabi niya na dumating siya, no? Sabi ni sabi ni ano, sabi ng kapatid na ako Lord, kung dumating ka lang na mas maaga-aga, no, inaabot mo pa sana yung kaibigan mo si Lazarus. Actually, umiyak si Jesus eh. Umiyak siya dahil sa sobrang lungkot na namatay ang kaibigan niya. Pero alam niyo, sa totoo lang, umiyak siya kung bakit. Alam niyo kung bakit? Naawa siya kasi sa mga tao. Supposedly, supposedly kasi hindi naman dapat na-experience sa mga tao yung kamatayan. Hindi naman ito yung design niya eh. Ang design niya, mabuhay na walang hanggan. Ang design niya, hindi magkasakit. Ang design niya, napakamagandang buhay. Pero ito, nakaka-experience ng kamatayan dahil sa kasalanan. Tumangi siya dahil sa awa niya sa mga tao. Pero pinakita niya, ginamit niya itong pagkakataon na ito. Sabi niya, you know, kumbaga, iurong niyo yung bato, palabasin niyo si Lazarus. Sabi niya, Lazarus, come out. Kaya ang tanong eh, bakit ginawa ni Kristo to Kasi gusto niya ipakita sa lahat na He is a big God. Ikaw, what stone do you need to remove from your life? So that God work, that God's work may be accomplished. Ano, anong anong bato ang pwede mo tanggalin jan sa buhay mo? Kasi gusto magwork ng Lord sa buhay mo. Eh. Gusto niyang tanggalin, tanggalin yun nakaharang para to mayuka, mabuhay ka sa pagkamatay ng kasalanan. Often we question God's timing no? and His ways, but His ways are not like ours. Madalas. Mahari nating tanungin. Ako, Lord, 
Kagaya ng tanong ng magkapatid na si Martha at si Mary, bakit ngayon ka lang? Bakit ngayon ka lang? Patay na si Lazarus. Eh ano ngayon? Nalimutan niyo na ba na ako ang author of life and death? That I can override everything. Ang laws hindi nag apply sa akin because I created laws. Stop questioning God kung bakit nangyayari sa buhay natin to. Start questioning God. Lord, dahil nangyari sa buhay ko to, ano ang gagawin niyo para ipakita sa akin na, na kayo ay in perfect control, kayo ang Diyos ng buhay ko. Sabi nga eh, no, is thinking is not our thinking. Ang pag-iisip ng Panginoon, ako huwag natin inkumpera sa pag-iisip natin. Uh, madaming wisdom ang nababalot dito sa mundo na hindi nga kayang arukin ng ating pag-iisip. He is sovereign. God is in charge. God is seldom early. Hmm? But never late. And last, no, your God is holy. So I encourage you, therefore, Be holy. Right? Your God is holy. Therefore, be holy. Madalas natin itong madinig. Madalas natin itong makita na nakasulat sa mga dingding o sa mga painting o whatever or pinipreach sa mga pastor o ng mga pare. I'd like to share to you, no? sabi ni Stan Toller, uh, isa, sa, isa sa, sa mga uh, I look up to na, ano, no? na author, speaker. Kasi sama parehas kami ng hulma dahil Uh, we're both into motivational training at the same time uh, uh, pastoring a church, no? Pero, yun nga, kinuha na siya ng Panginoon, kaya lang. Pero anyway, sabi niya, no, isa sa mga sinulat niya na nakuha ko doon sa libro na binigay niya sa akin, no, nakil- nakita ko siya at nakilala at nakamayan ko doon sa Florida. Na sabi niya, a holiness, no, is a belief that is experienced. No? Ang kabanalan ay isang paniniwala na pwede mong madanasan. It can be researched, it can be referenced, thought, implemented, sung, illustrated, posted, translated, and transferred through the countenance, conversations, and conduct, and the conduct of its believers. Right? Merong manifestation dapat doon sa countenance natin, sa conversations natin, at the, how, we can, uh, how we conduct no, yung buhay natin. I, I definitely agree. No, if you don't know your God, here's the question, how can you trust Him? Kung hindi mo alam na holy pala yung Diyos ko, how can you be holy? You see, we, sabi ko na, we are pre-wired, pre-wired imitators. No? So kung hindi natin kilala, yung i-imitate natin ay siya sigurado para kang to, sumunod doon sa isang bulag na papunta doon sa bangin at ikaw naman ay tatalon din kahit nakita mo na siyang tumalon. Ang Diyos natin ay hindi bulag, napakalinaw ng mata. Ang Diyos natin ay alam mong pupuntahan. Ang Diyos natin ay pwede mapagkatiwalaan. Ang Diyos natin ay malaki at ang pinaka importante sa lahat na dapat natin nagayahin sa ating Panginoon na ang Diyos natin ay hindi lang makapangyarihan kung hindi napakabanal. Alam nyo, sabi sa Leviticus, Therefore, be holy because I am holy. Now, this is a message to the people of Israel. No? Sabi niya, maging banal kayo sapagkat ang Diyos nyo ay banal. No, inulit pa yan sa 1 Peter 1.16. No, in-encourage sa Peter yung, yung sinulat ni Pedro. Sabi niya, Be holy because I am holy. Pwede mo ba sabihin sa anak mo na maging haragan ka, maging sanggano ka dahil ako isang haragan at ako isang sanggano. Natural sa sabihin mo sa anak mo, maging mabait ka, maging maayos na tao ka, maging mapagmahal ka sa Diyos. 
Ang madaling sabihin yan. Dapat una-una, eh sabi nga ni Stan Toller, makita sa conduct ng behavior natin, makita sa conversations natin, makita no, sa ating countenance, yung holiness, kung whatever yung, yung sinasabi natin, ay makita. Hindi lamang natin basahin yung salita ng Diyos, kundi makita sa buhay natin. Yung, yung, yung bang masasabi ng tao, ano, isa, sa, isa sa pinakamagandang compliment na pwede makuha ng isang krisyano, sabihin sa'yo ng mga tao na, I can see Jesus in you. Sa buhay mo, nakikita ko ang Panginoong Isyo Kristo. Kahit ka na mag-teach, naniniwala ako na isa kang Kristiyano. How you live your life, how you make your decisions, how you react to your problems. I can see that you have a big God. I can see that you, have, you, you, you trust Him so much na hindi ka madaling maratin, hindi ka madaling mastartin. No? You can thread through scorpions and serpents. Because you have this beautiful relationship with God. At kaya nakikita ko yung holiness sa'yo ng Panginoon. Not because you are holy sa kapasidad mo. That's, that's impossible. You'll be only holy. You'll be only mabait. You'll be only maayos ang buhay because of the grace of God. Nothing less. Nothing more. Uh, I, <laughs> subukan mo to be apart from the power source which is God. Wala kang magagawa sa buhay. You'll end up living a life of chaos and end up living a life of uncertainty and you end up living a life of, alam niyo, naging araw-araw, magulo, masakit sa ulo, problema dito, problema doon. Pag naging krisyano ka, may problema ka pa rin, pero may kapayapaan ka sa puso. And you will, uh, kumbaga, hindi mo deserve maging holy and then you'll experience holiness. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi you have a holy God. You're imitating your holy God. Amen? Kaya ang tanong, whatever your problem now, sana sa umaga na ito, yung simpleng mensahe na our big God can handle it, whatever it is, sana tumimo sa ating mga puso. Sana maisip natin na ang Diyos natin hindi lamang design or crucifix sa bahay. Hindi lamang design na crucifix sa ating kwintas. Hindi lamang picture na nakalagay sa ating wallet. Ang Diyos natin ay nakikipagrelasyon. Ang Diyos natin ay pwedeng maramdaman sa araw-araw. Ang Diyos natin ay masarap gayahin. Ang Diyos natin ay may mapagbigay, mapagmahal, mapagpatawad at napakalaki. Napakalaki ang ating Panginoon. Kaya huwag kang manliit. Bakit ka manliliit ang laki ng tatay mo? Okay? Ba't ka mangliliit ang tatay mo, hari na mga hari, Panginoon na mga Panginoon? Ang tatay mo, creator of this earth. Ang tatay mo, no, ang tatay mo someday, isang araw, all tongues shall confess, all knees will bow. No? At sila, lahat makungumpisahan ng Jesus is Lord. Eh, whatever your problem now, napakaliit niyan kumpara sa napakalaking Diyos po. Alam ko may pinagtataanan ka kung sino ka man nanonood ngayon. Hindi aksidente na nakapanood ka ngayon. Uh, alam ko, mabigat ang pakiramdam mo pero ibigay mo lahat sa Panginoon yan sa umaga na to. Hayaan mo siya ang mag-handle ng lahat ng problema mo because you have a big God. Our takeaway for this morning, number one, He is sovereign above all. God is in charge in your life, even during this time of pandemic. God is seldom early, but never late. He will never be late. Eksaktuhan ng Panginoon. Pagpapalaing ka eksakto, sasagapin ka eksakto. At fair siya. He's a just God. Hindi niya papayagan. Hindi, pwedeng hindi mo siya makilala. 
Kaya binibigyan ka niya ng pagkakataon sa araw na to na makipagrelasyon ka sa kanya. At tandaan natin, pang-apat, your God is holy, therefore be holy. Kaya kung nandito ka sa araw na to nais ko ano yan kasi isang panalangin at uh, pa, parehas nating iangat ang pangalan ng Panginoong Yesus sa umaga na to Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your message this morning. Thank you, Lord God. And we acknowledge that you are a big God. We acknowledge, Lord God, that you are sovereign. We acknowledge, Lord God, you are in perfect control. You are in charge. Lord, we thank you that before we utter our lips, Lord God, you already answered our prayers, Lord. Lord, for those people who want to accept you as their personal Lord and Savior, Allow me, Lord God, to lead them in praying, Lord God, to, to, to initiate a relationship with you, Lord. If you are here and you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, but I believe that you died upon the cross for me, that you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sins. And I believe that on the third day, you rose from the dead and went to heaven to prepare a place for me. That would be exciting, Lord, and I accept you now as my Savior, as my Lord, as my God, as my friend, as my Master. Come into my heart and set me free from my sins. And because you are my Savior, I shall not die, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, and uh, allow me to bless you this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face. The Lord make His face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you are blessed. Amen and amen. This is your LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsama muli sa amin. And uh, we're hoping, no, some announcements, we're hoping na, na we can reopen on uh, November 1. Uh, please pray for us. Uh, miss na miss na namin yung bawat isa. Miss na miss na namin kayo. And uh, hindi ka pa nakapunta sa church namin. We're inviting you know, to be part of, of our family. We're in Third and Vermont sa bandang Filipino-Korean town sa, sa LA area, sa mismong Los Angeles, sa heart, sa puso ng Los Angeles dito sa Amerika, sa California. And... Um, Uh, we would like to invite you to come and join us on October 18. We will be celebrating our 125th year anniversary no, as the LA First Church of the Nazarene, no, the multi-congregational church dyan sa dun mismo dun sa simbahan namin. And also, uh, there will be a lot of uh, things to expect. So please um, come and join us and uh, be part of our family. Thank you again for this morning. I hope that uh, you're having a great uh, weekend. Uh, kami, nag-bike kami ng gabi, uh, nag-bonding kami ng pamilya, and um, thank you, thank you. I hope and I pray for blessings sa family nyo, sa iyo na nakikinig ngayon. I pray that uh, you get to know the Lord and you're, you're growing sa faith mo. Maraming salamat sa opportunity of uh, Uh, for giving us opportunity to bless your heart and minister to you. God bless you. Happy Sunday. Bye.